back. It's Andy Petrillo. It is Jordan Wilson. It is Trills and Wills. I like how you bought into that. I did. It You're very you about, creative. I like it because I just think our names, how it matches, it's going to go far. You know See, I mean? I'm not good at that kind of stuff. When people ask me, can you come up with a clever name, a title, I'm just it, like, for the love of the game. Is it because you feel that whatever you say is cheesy? <laughs> no, I'm just really okay. not that good well, at being clever. <laughs> like, for me, that's how I feel, too. Usually I come up with something, I'm like, oh, it's cheesy. But, like, cheesy also sells. It just can't be so cheesy. No, 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 I it get it. It has to be, like, kind of, like, just in that, that nice sweet spot. No, I'm just bad. I, okay. I will flat out admit... I am bad at coming up with titles, like the names, and everyone's like, they put it out to put it out to the group. Yeah. What do you want the show to be called? I buckle. I'm like, I have no clue. That's I have no creativity. And I'm also a bad, I've, I've also realized this, I'm a really bad chirper. Because I'm either <laughs> like, stop it. Or I'm gonna kill you. Yeah, like, you I, there's hard. no in between. Okay. We're either, I'm either just like not coming back at you because I don't know, yeah. again, how to be witty, clever, or I'm taking you down. I'm, you know, slashing your tires. We're wow. fighting in the parking lot. I don't know how to be in between. <laughs> we got we got dark real fast. I think I think you should laugh. Like I even on the pitch when I back in the day when I used to play, I um I would smile. Yeah, and yesteryear, <laughs> um I would smile. Like someone would do something to me, and I just go <laughs> like. That, that's, I think you need to catch that Were one. Were you a good chirper? Would you consider yourself someone who could just give it right back, be funny, like not threaten someone's life like I would, but like be funny? In my later years, I think I got too hot when I was younger. Like yeah. I was like, yo, you're talking to me? Like I was ready to go. But then I think as I got older, I got more mature. I was like, I'd say my little one-liners and I knew who to attack and like when to go at them. Mm -hmm. But like at, for the most part, I really don't talk to people unless they talk to me. And then even then, it just like it, it takes a special type of person uh, for me to for me to talk to. When I was younger, I played. You know, when when I was playing in my Von Lightning years. Come on. And I played with a girl. Her line all the time. Whenever somebody bothered her, she's like, "You want to go? <laughs> you want to go?" And we just do all the time. That was her line. That was it. I'm like, "What are you doing? Why are you?" It's trying, a lot, though. Why are you trying to fight somebody? I, that was I, her thing. Want to go? I'm like, oh. No. I feel like once <laughs> your opponent knows that you're ready to fight then they're just going to like, they're going to exploit that. They're going to just basically hit you after the play, talk to you all the time. So you can't show your weakness. You kind of have to do what I said, like smile. Give a little bit like of a chuckle, like a bit like mm. you're crazy. I like it. You yeah. know who wasn't smiling? Any of the three Canadian MLS teams. Oh, uh, first of all, very excited, right? MLS started this weekend. Uh, fantastic. A lot of pomp and circumstance around it. Really excited as they enter their 28th year. The Canadian teams are curious to see how they're going to do. St. Louis enters the fold. MLS continuing to expand. The new Apple deal. How did you like it? We'll get into that in just a moment. Um, I do want to also give a shout out. The league did Grant Wall a solid. Every stadium uh, hosting a game reserved a spot in the press box and had his photo. They had flowers. They put out a tribute, as we know, Grant Wall passing away during uh, the quarterfinals of the World Cup in Qatar. And he was a voice. He was a loud voice, right, in the world of soccer, in particular North American soccer, and always trying to build it up and always trying to give it the recognition it deserves. So it's a huge loss. But, you know, I commend MLS for recognizing that as well. It was very, it was touching. It was a great tribute. Um, and, you know, we continue to miss him every single day. We're going to miss his voice. We're going to miss his voice this season. But let's uh, take a look at the Canadian teams and in particular Toronto FC. This is the team where we're all, we're curious about them. And it seems like every pundit's the same way. They're like, you could put them third in the conference. You could put them dead last in the conference. We just don't know what Toronto FC is going to be. So game one. I don't know about you. A little scarred here. I see a goal going in the 13th minute. I'm like, here we go again. <laughs> here we go inside the first 15 minutes. Yeah. We're letting in goals. You hit all those notes, by the way, but Did go I? ahead. Okay, yeah, that was my new song. So <laughs> DC United, that's who they're taking on. They go up first. But I want to know what's worse for you. Their late game collapse. By the way, DC United scoring two goals in stoppage time to end up beating Toronto 3-2. Or the fact that Lorenzo Insigne comes out in the first half, noticeably distraught. I mean, this guy could be out a, a couple weeks. We, we still don't know. Bob Bradley, after the game, didn't really give an update on him. But, like, their, their success is on the shoulders of their forwards as well, their high-paying guy. Whether you like it or not, you know how it is in sports. It doesn't matter if you're a mediocre player. If I decide to give you $10 million a year, 
you are carrying the team. You just have to. That's what it is. Based on your salary. But now, I'm not saying Lorenzo's a mediocre player, but you know what I mean. Oftentimes you're judged by the dollar amount you make. Now he's out? Yeah. What? I was telling you the other day, Charles, that I drive a Honda Fit. 07 <laughs> DX manual. Yeah. It's like a go-kart. Manual? Yeah. It can break down at any time. It has. Wifey's picked me up on the side of the road. It, <laughs> it has broken down. This is my dream car, but it cost me 4K. I did a little research. A Tesla Model X SUV, 140K. Now, that can't break down on the road. Mm. If I'm going to go pick up some groceries, wifey can't come get me in the Tesla and pick. That's what it is with Insigne. Like, he is the big dog, 15 mil. He's supposed to come here and bang and goals and at the very least play. So having that, that expensive player on the bench is, is, is very painful right now for anyone who's a fan of TFC. No kidding. Io comes in, Io Akinola. I have a lot of faith in this kid. Keep calling him a kid. I mean, he has getting, potential. He has so much potential, and I feel for him. I mean, we know his story. I mean, this is a guy where there was a lot of hype around him. Would he play for the United States? Would he play for Canada? He chooses Canada. It's so great. Comes on in, Gold Cup, like a minute in, tears his ACL. Like, it's horrible. Yeah. Um, I even heard that, like, Josie Altidark, because, you know, Josie took a lot of the young guys under his wing, too, when he was with Toronto FC. Like, Josie was in tears, because he's like, this is an ACL. Yeah. Like, this is not easy to bounce back from. Right. So, uh, you know, we also know that he ended up getting COVID in his recovery. I mean, this is a guy whose fitness mm -hmm. took a knock. So he is working so hard to get back. And Bob Bradley knows he needs to work with him. He knows he needs to finesse the game a little bit. Right. So he comes on in, has a brilliant chance. The blade of grass got him, though. <laughs> like it's. Oh, come on. <laughs> It tripped him up. It did. It got, he got swallowed in it a little bit. I mean, the kid has potential. I think I'm not going to get too, uh, too crazy about one game because it is a long season. Mm -hmm. But I think for him, it is just the fitness and then getting his confidence back because yeah. the, the potential's there. He has a glimmer of, I want to say brilliance, but potential. Like he can come off the bench or be a guy that starts and like contributes. And it's not that deep in the MLS where you need to come and score 10, 15 goals, but can you score six, seven and be fit and be, be ready to be called upon? Because that's another issue that I want to talk to you about, Trills, is like, how do you feel about TFC's depth? They made two subs. One was forced. Yeah. I don't think they planned on subbing off in senior, obviously no. in the first half. Oh. You're going to ride or die with that guy playing. But you're looking at their bench and no disrespect to their players, but it's a marathon, not a sprint, a season. You have 34 mm -hmm. games, you have can champs, you have so many games to play. What, what, what do you feel about TFC's depth? Not good. <laughs> not good, because Bob Bradley was asked that in the post-game press conference. He was asked, like, you made two subs. And we, we're, we're going to get into the collapse pretty soon. But, you know, whether that was a mental collapse, whether that was because of conditioning, fitness, he was asked, like, why only two subs? Which, to your point... One was forced. And he didn't really come out and say, because I have no faith in my bench. Yeah. But he was just basically like, yeah, I guess the guy's retired, but, you know, you got to give it. Like, and that's a problem. That's a real problem. So I think, you know, Toronto C can't be done or you got to have maybe a little bit more faith than in that bench. Who knows? I don't know. Right. We got to got to go to training. You got to see how guys are looking or, you know, at least whatever information they're willing to share. But that is a real issue when it's so visible that your team is losing ground in the final like 10 minutes of the game or, you know, 15 minutes of the game. You see DC pushing, pushing. They're at home. Yeah. They have the crowd behind them too. And then there you go. So let's talk about this 90th and 98 minute goals. Mm. Once again, I'm like, here we go again, <laughs> giving up goals in the last had, 15 minutes. I had no clue today when I saw you that it was going to be a musical type of show. Like, if I knew that, I would, do me fa so la ti do. <laughs> like, I would have warmed up. I would have made sure I was ready. But you just, as soon as you started to show up, <laughs> you started singing. Um, this is, but this is TFC's MO. You look at last year. Start of games, horrible, playing catch up. Brilliant way to come back. So you're like, ah, oh, his team's got potential. Look at them. They come back. Now they even have the lead. Mark Anthony K puts Toronto on the lead. Woo! Yeah. And then it's a collapse. It's, that's, that's mental, though. Playing the game, any goal that's scored in any extra time, it is mental at that point. Um, I will say people will argue and say that TFC maybe didn't have the best game, but I think when they started the second half and they were trailing 1-0, 
that there were glimpses of like, hey, we can go and do this. And then you have a moment of brilliance with, uh, I would say the free kick by Benedeschi is just class. Mm, mm -hmm. And then what if you get a bit of luck, it falls to Mark Anthony K and for him to just be there at the right time and to fall a, a rebound, score 2-1. At that point, at that moment, you switch your mindset. I'm not saying park the bus and go and defend. But I'm saying, like, a road win is great. You know you know what it's like, Andy. You've been following this game for many years. You've played it. You're talking about Vaughn Lightning. Shout out to your girls. But when you're on the road, it's different. You just have to get a result. At home, you can feel more comfortable. You can, if it's tied, you can maybe go push. You got the crowd behind you. Your first game with all these changes and seeing you out, as soon as it goes 2-1, flip the switch. You're like, hey, let's just protect what we have. I'm let's just playing 10 back. Let's go, let's go home with three points. I didn't see that with TFC. And that for me was like just an error in their ways. Like if we're gonna if we're gonna talk about their first game, it's like, hey, you go up, you're down. You had a deficit, you turn it around two one, protect that. I think it was just a bit of a mental lapse and a bit of not being calculated to not not get the three points. Yeah, everyone just like I mean, don't drop too deep, but defend. Defend and with still, your life. Still felt like they were pushing for goals, which Okay, I get it. It's entertainment, or maybe that's your style, but that's where it's a little bit tactic to me as well. Like, sure, it's mental. Everyone's got to be committed to protecting that lead. Yeah. But at the same time, like, I feel it's direction too. But you gotta, have to be told, yeah. right? Like, protect that lead. Um, gotta, Bernadeschi, I, by the way, getting that other goal, penalty kick, just step up him to the spot all the time. I, I think so. And I, I talked about on one talk of the day that he could have 20 goals. And obviously, if you're adding pens and the way he took that free kick, a little bit more on that, and that goes in. That's two goals right there easily. So I was just going to ask you quickly, Trills, um, any positives from that game? From well, I mean, you can, of course. They came back. Bottom line, I mean, it stinks that they have to play catch-up, but they've proven they can come back. Yeah. Uh, I, I did think Bernadeschi looked good. I think Ayo's just lacking a finishing touch, but I think the potential's there. He puts himself in the right, puts himself in the right position. The ball's at his feet. It's just what's happening, you know, there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I like the way Michael Bradley looked. Listen, I have questions around a guy who's getting older. I always have questions around guys getting sure. older. That, sure, that's game one. We'll see as the season progresses, but I still think Bradley looked good. Like, there was a lot there. where I'm like, And then the back line, this is a brand new back line with the exception of Richie Larea. So I'm just like, who are these guys? I thought Petretta looked great. Yeah. I thought he had a lot of speed up the wing. He was contributing offensively, too. Didn't find himself at a place too much either, um, you know, defensively, except for, of course, to collapse at the end of the game. Where I think that was on everybody. But there's a lot where I'm going, okay, okay. But, yes, you see how quickly things can go sideways for a team that doesn't have depth. So that, that to me, ends up becoming the biggest concern. That's the biggest concern for sure. Uh, things were looking great for Vancouver as we turn our attention now to Vancouver Whitecaps because they strike first in their game. So – they end, so here's the thing. So out of the 12 games that were played on the weekend, four of the 12 changed score in the last 20 minutes and also changed the result. Mm. Two Canadian teams were involved in that. We just talked about Toronto. The other one was Vancouver. They have the 1-0 lead. They allow two goals in three minutes, 70th, 73rd. They end up losing 2-1. Ugh. That was at home. <laughs> um, so what, what are you looking into? Do you look at this team and go, no, I'm, I'm looking at that first half? I'm looking at how strong that first half was, you know, creating chances, controlling the game. Or are you going, nah, I'm looking at that second half, and that to me is the real Vancouver, and that collapse. I'm going to say that they started well. They had 67% possession for the first half. They attacked it. I think this is just them not being clinical enough. Um, so naturally, we always talk about that I'm the optimist. I'm looking at the glass half full. Mm -hmm. And that's how I see... Vancouver Whitecaps and, uh, and their performance. Sartini said at the end of the game, um, they are the better team for 65 minutes, which I think is accurate. But what he also said, um, that should translate into winning a game, and I disagree. I think as a team... Because it's takes, 90 minutes. Yeah, you take care of moments. <laughs> you see all the time, Chills, and, and yeah. football, like you have a good first half, something happens in the 15 minutes when you go in the locker room, you come back out, momentum changes, you're a whole different team. You have to finish the game. You have to finish every single moment. And it's not even 90 minutes anymore. It's 90 plus, right? Mm -hmm. You got to make sure that you're, you're locked in and in tune for, for the whole game. So I think it was a good start. I think for people in Vancouver watching the team, it was exciting. It was something to watch. But it's about taking care of those chances. Uh, Dahomey had one in the first half. Brian Wright had one. Uh, oh, these they all, looked good. They looked good. They looked. They played promising football. Now I want to talk to you about two guys in particular that I feel mm. need to step up for them. Uh, Brian Wright, 
Brian White, sorry, I'm saying Brian Wright because uh, he needs to be right. <laughs> I said Brian Wright because it's York, but Brian <laughs> White uh, had four goals last year in the MLS. He had three in Can Champs, two against York United when we played them in the semifinals. By the way, he's possibly one of the strongest guys I've ever played against. I cannot move this guy. Like I'm pretty strong. I push a guy. Usually they move. He didn't move. He has like farm boy strength. Anyways, I digress. Ryan Gold, baller. He had eight goals and 11 assists last season. For me, he was the man of the match. He's the player that needs to get on the ball and needs to make things happen for them. Those two, I feel like, have to carry a lot of the weight for this, this team because attacking, it's, it's lacking. I didn't mean to rhyme, but it just worked out like that, that way. Though. You like it? And um, yeah, so I feel like those two guys are going to be carrying a lot of weight for the squad. Yeah, see, I like the way they look too. And I wonder, and that's why... I know everyone's going to say, well, there's two, there's two teams on the field and, you know, they're, they're tired too or it's their first game of the season too. Yeah. So you can't use fitness, conditioning as an excuse. Sure, granted, which I feel like is another topic that we could get into and spend a lot of time on, which is, is MLS preseason taxing enough? Like, does mm -hmm. it properly prepare teams? I don't, I mean, I don't know. I speak to a lot of people. They don't feel like those are the types of games that really test the player's fitness. Yeah. And maybe that's not... Maybe the preseason games aren't for that. Maybe it is truly about your training and everything else, right? But I think we saw a lot of games where teams did look tired, but whatever. It's the first, whatever. I'm, I'm talking myself in circles here. It's the first game. First it's game. the hype around it too. And then sometimes you're ah, in the beginning, like you just took down a glass of sugar. And then, <laughs> you know, by the 75th minute, there were some sugar crashes. Sugar crashes for sure. For a lot of teams. Vancouver to me was one of those teams because they came out flying. They're at home too. So they've got a lot of the energy behind them and you know they strike first and it's looking good to your point you just mentioned a lot of the players who continue to have shots on net uh you know Takaoko was making some great saves yeah. as well he was tested it's not like he wasn't tested and then you know the first goal uh was off a corner for um you know the, the comeback uh, against Vancouver so you know you have a, a corner for Real Salt Lake gets in behind the defense they score we're 1-1 one, one. and then 2 minutes later I don't know. I feel like Teko, I feel like he had, if I'm going to speak like from a goalkeeper point of view, it's like you saw the shot. I feel like he saw the shot the whole way. Yeah. That to me was a little bit like, okay, you need to work on your angles a little bit. But again, I wonder if that was just also fatigue. I don't know because yeah. everyone was collapsing. I mean, Vancouver. it's no secret that you're a goalkeeper uh, hugger. You love them. <laughs> and I, I mean, will make an excuse for them all the time. You will. But like, let's talk about... Takaoka and his performance because for me he had five six crucial big saves how do you feel about him I know you love keepers talk to me about it well that's what first game I liked it I did I liked his performance you know he's coming on in he's new to everything right um and he's not the biggest so he's I, six feet yeah he's six feet I never want to hold that against a goalkeeper, but I'm, I mean, I mean if you're it six, matters. <laughs> I mean, true, but if you're six feet, you're agile and you're like not afraid to come out and punch stuff, that's exactly. okay too. Like sometimes six five, if you're not athletic, it's you're lumbering. Yeah. So I mean, he got down really quick for shots. Yeah. He, yeah. he blocked a lot. But he you saw that second goal, right? He's I a little did. too far out and it's going up and it's going yeah. like, you know, just uh, it's I can a little literally bit more. see Get up there. you talk like I know you talk with your hubby all the time about goalkeepers and the position. Cause I could see you. as soon as we talked about it, you said, Yeah, he should be here. <laughs> Gotta watch his angles. I'm like, man, <laughs> you're invested and I love it, Trills. It's it's a listen, it is a fascinating position because you're yeah. also trying to instruct your back line. So again, when you're a new keeper and you know, you go back to TFC, which you're just talking about them. Sean Johnson, by no means new to the league, by no means, you know, he's been around for a long time. He's a champ. But it doesn't matter. You're new to a team and you have a completely new back line yeah. that, you know, in front of you. So there's communication that still needs to be worked on. So I, you know, I'm, win I'm willing to cut him a little bit of slack there. But I thought he looked good. Let's put it this way. I think there's a ton of promise. And I think Vancouver should be excited about that goalkeeper. Absolutely. And just their performance in the beginning. Because if they could take that first half... Um, and build on it. Not, hey, yeah. this is exactly how we're going to play all the time, but build on that. Build on that energy. Build on that willingness to go forward. Uh, it could be something for them, especially with the new format, 13 teams going to playoffs. Yeah, That's but see, I'm con the only concern I have for Vancouver, and I would have this for anybody, you know, anybody, all the teams, I, and I do, I have this concern for all the teams that are also taking part in CONCACAF Champions League, mm. right? There is just a lot of soccer to be played for Vancouver. And there, there's that, 
right? Everyone's going to be playing in League's Cup. We know that as well. Then they have their, the Canadian Championship. I just wonder if they have the depth to handle all of that. Because that's, that's, that's going to be, to me, the biggest challenge for Sartini is knowing who to play when, you know, are you prioritizing? Because this... I'm going to put this out there right now, and I don't care if, put I'm, it. if I'm reprimanding yeah, coaches say here. Just. Show some respect for the Canadian Championship. Show respect for it, because this is what ends up happening. Is I get it, right? You have MLS that you're worried about. You want to make the playoffs. You CONCACAF Champions League, we know that's prestigious. We know this. League's Cup, it's new. Nobody wants to be embarrassed by League MX. <laughs> you're representing MLS. Nobody wants to be embarrassed, because that's the theme. Can't get it done against Mexican sides. Can't get it done. So I get that a lot of the attention is going to be put there. And then what ends up happening is you don't know who's starting for them in Canadian Championship. You're like, are you putting your best foot forward? And that's what I always worry about is that seems to be the competition yeah, that suffers. For sure. I don't like that. No, I agree with you. It's uh, But I think for Vancouver specifically, that's a that's a tournament they, they should win. Go go and do back-to-back. Has it been a team to do back-to-back? I haven't oh, researched yeah, that. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Toronto's done it. Done it, it three, twice? Uh, I think they've done it back-to-back. Go on Information Superhighway, <laughs> also known as Google. <laughs> but they, we'll, yeah, they've done we'll it. We'll figure that out after, definitely. <laughs> yeah, they've definitely done it. All right, so there you go. So that's a loss uh, for Vancouver, even though they were the only one of the three Canadian teams to strike first. Let's go to Montreal. CF Montreal. Montreal. Taking on... Welcome to Miami. <laughs> Benvenuto a Miami. You've so that, definitely been. Let's talk about that. I know you've been to Miami. She's like, I've lived there. What do you mean? What do you? There's like a sidewalk that has like my name on it, my <laughs> handprints like, in it. <laughs> Sign it. Miami, huh? Two nil. Uh, Miami lose. Uh, Miami, I should say. Montreal loses uh, in that one. We were wondering how they were going to do. They have a new coach. Um, they've made some changes. By the way, no Joel Waterman. I say that because obviously we love to keep an eye on players who, you know, once sure. played in the Canadian Premier League, make the jump. Uh, he's dealing with something. So he didn't uh, play in the game. But what did you make of their performance? Do you see hope? Because, you know, our boy Ollie on One Soccer <laughs> Today is very adamant this is still the best of the three Canadian teams, uh, despite changes. Do you feel the same? Well, I'm not even going to pigeonhole myself, put myself in a little rabbit hole and say, who's the best? I will say that we'll give them some time. They didn't look great. I'll say that much. Um, mm. Parts that I like about the squad is that it's just always difficult having a new manager. You had players leave, at least five players leave. You maybe replace one of them, two of them throughout the season or beginning of the season. But they have room to grow with their cap as well, but just with their team. Um, and it's early days. Like I'm not going to judge a team by their first game. Like, you're still trying to find yourself. You're still trying to find your feet. You need to grow into a rhythm. What I will say, it looks very difficult if you're looking at the run of games they're about to play. Like, their schedule, if you're taking a look at it, mm. I think there's Austin in there. They're playing Philadelphia. Uh, they got Vancouver, New England. <laughs> like, it's, it's tough. So you don't want to be playing six games and you got maybe one point. Then already it's, mm. it's an uphill battle for the rest of the season. Um, but, yeah, CF Montreal, I will say as well that... What do you think about the goalkeepers in terms of... Calendar is great. You got to give him credit because, again, I think CF Montreal uh, put some good shots on target. He came up big. Yeah. Um, so he's even leading, like, statistical categories. I mean, oh, it's game one, whatever, for yeah. goalkeepers. So that, that, but that just tells me Montreal tested him. Uh, Pantamis, you know, he, he looked okay. There were just some moments as well. And this is the big one, right? anyone can debate this. You don't need to just know the position to be like, should he have caught that? Should he have punched that? Yeah. Because I think the second goal, it was one of those where he punched it. Maybe if he caught it, you would have ended the play. That's it. Mm. The play's dead. But now you punch it, you put it out. It doesn't properly clear. It stays within Miami's possession. And there you go. So that's, a, that's a rule that I had as a defender, right? I'm like, if you come out as a keeper, I know I'm not a keeper. Guys aren't shooting at me at 100 miles per hour. I get it. But as a defender, mm. I'm like, if you're punching that, just punch it. Don't fan Right, just hit it so it goes into an area that we have a second to recuperate. Not like you punch it to someone and we gotta go and make a, a last ditch tackle. Yeah. So Hey, speaking of CPLers, Sean Rea, what did you make? Twenty nine minutes. Yeah. Comes in the game as a as a substitution. Three chances created. Mm hmm. I mean, are you just excited to, to see what he can bring this season too? I am. And I think also getting subbed into a game like that, like you have nothing to lose. Like go and express yourself. I think he needs to just show a bit of that flair. 
I'm, I'm actually so surprised you didn't sing when I said express yourself. Express yourself. But, uh, <laughs> I know I did. I think, I, I, express yourself. <laughs> Anyways, <laughs> why are we singing today? We've been singing all day and it's because of you. you Anyways, Trill. <laughs> I like to sing. Yeah. Um, <laughs> Sean Rea. You say you saw when he played for for Valley in the CPL. He played with confidence. He played like he couldn't be touched. And that's how when you're a luxury player. Luxury players for me are those wingers, tens, attacking players, the ones that can kind of get away with not defending with all that they have, mm. and they get all the glory. Sean Reyes, those guys, the attacking players. He he comes into the game and expresses himself. I want him to do that more going into the season because that's how you get minutes. And then assists, goals, um, expected goals, even though I don't really rate that stat, it's important in terms of what you're doing and the product mm -hmm. on the pitch. So for me, I, I really enjoyed that. I, I really enjoyed watching him, and I think that if he really just buckles down and takes his opportunities, yeah, this is something that he can really grow from. God, there's so much more to get into here with MLS opening weekend. So three Canadian teams all drop uh, their first games. As mentioned, four games out of the 12 had a change of score in the last 20 that uh, all, you know led to victories for teams that were down. I already mentioned Vancouver, Toronto FC. The other game, so St. Louis. St. Louis becomes the first expansion side team to win their opener since LAFC in 2018. Mm. Jared Sprout played for Austin FC. Jared <laughs> Sprout is down on the ground, and Austin has possession. They're moving it up the pitch. He calls for it. I think he calls for it. You look at it, he put his hands out. He's a former teammate. So now he's with St. Louis. He's a former teammate, puts his hand down. <gasps> he passes it to him. He turns around. He scores. Is that foul play? You t I mean, is that allowed? I mean, people do it all the time in training. A hundred percent. But that's in training. In the middle of the game, you see his hand go down. Like, give me the ball. And I, I feel for the Austin player who's like, us, my former, like, it's a former teammate, but in his head, he's like, oh, I know him. That's Jared. Here you go. Oh, <laughs> Here no. You go, buddy. You're wearing a different colored kit. Oh, no. <laughs> it's, it's a huge blunder. And poor guy. You never want to see it, but you can't, you can't make those mistakes as a defender, center back. Oh, it, dude. You can't. You just dude. can't do those things. No, it's not good. It's, it's not, not good. But that, that to me, I was like, what just happened there? Anyways, it was not good, but at the same time, are you, what are you handing me? Well, for the podcasters, they don't know. It's a white tin, and you got to open it. Well, there's, there's Valentine's Day. You're my co-host, big sis. I brought you something. We were talking about it the other day, right? <laughs> we were talking about it, yeah. and I said how I love sour candy. Yeah. This is my go-to. Sour Patch Kids, if you're listening, sponsor me, sponsor us, and Cherry Blasters, but you got to take one. But first, you got to earn it. I got to ask you a question. Is that because it was just sour what happened to Austin because they lost? A little bit. A little bit. But also, I ate the, the rest yesterday, and I thought, hey, let me just give Trills some when I, when I come to the show today. Oh, great. I don't know why I did that, because now I'm, you, I'm going <laughs> to spit. You, all over the microphone. Talk, you're going to talk like this a little bit? Oh, my goodness. Because I also just wanted to ask you a little bit. Oh, you about, can't ask. No, I can't. <laughs> so Philly, they're, so the union, they're considered still one of the top teams, right? They go, they dismantle Columbus. Listen, I'm not all that surprised by that. Mm. I want to look at Atlanta. That's the other team that launches an incredible comeback. They're down, and Tiago Almada scores two goals. What was it, 93rd, 98th minute? Mm. Can you please tell me how incredible that is for Atlanta, also at home, to have that kind of comeback? Amazing. Uh, the end of the game, I'm so sorry about the, the cherry blast. Please talk. I can no, see. Keep talking. <laughs> keep talking. It's all you. Go for it. To bust net, 93rd, 98th, like that, um, mm. it's revolutionary. It's a great, a great way to start the season, a great way to get things going for the, for the club. Anyways, there's pretty, that's the kind of drama we love. It is, I mean, you, opening weekend as well. Opening weekend, so excited. So exciting, I should say. Um, what did you make of also the, the new way to watch? Yeah. On Apple, being able to just go to any game. It's nice. I, uh, you know, for me, anything that's new, I'm always a bit skeptical. I'm just like, sure. oh. especially with technology. I'm like, I'm still stuck in the, the early 90s. I'm horrible. But I liked it. I really did. I think that it's, uh, it's a nice plus. It's nice to get all that attention specifically on football yeah. or soccer. I will say this, like, it, streaming is not the future. Yeah. Streaming is now. I hear you. Streaming is now. Anyways, I was, I, I was like in heaven going through all the games. You loved it. Yeah, my highlights, kind of like that, the MLS 360. Got, it's like your you know, NFL red zone. I was a spoiled little brat <laughs> on the weekend. And now 
I was just, first of all, it was just so random Yo, how you I said this over. Secondly, next time, bring a panino. I'll eat that too <laughs> on the air. You've been watching and listening to One Nation. Always a pleasure spending time with you, the listeners, the viewers, and with you, Jordo. That's Jordan Wilson. I'm Annie Patrillo.